Hey gang, welcome back to my channel if you've been here before and if not, welcome! I'm glad that you found me. There are videos on this channel with serious information that can help heal more than 90% of any health, wellness, or body image challenge without buying silly products, without gimmicks, just info that you can apply to your life in a way that suits your own lifestyle and it's going to get you to your goals. Anyhow, today's video is actually going to be an audio. I have been invited on a beautiful colleague of mine's podcast. Her name is Amanda Gazzola. Her podcast is the Relove and Rise podcast. And that podcast is all about taking back control of your life. Learning to love the you that is deep inside of you. Again, the authentic you, the real you. And breaking the cycle of all the negative influence around you because there is negative influence around all of us. And not not necessarily negative, but the vast endless universe of the internet with all of its info that's hugely overwhelming, contradicting. This is about breaking all of that down. And today we are going to talk about getting back to basics. This was an awesome podcast experience because this was totally unscripted, so raw, just conversation between Amanda and I. We touch on things like what happens to someone's body if they were placed in a jolly jumper as an infant. What might happen to your child if they are in a jolly jumper as an infant? Like just that's a tiny piece, but the rest is just about bringing it back to basics. What are the basics? Honestly, because everything is so misconstrued, so blown out of proportion. Just it can be so much easier and it's amazing to me that my clients come to me and I get them to their health, wellness, and body image goals really quickly and they almost aren't even sure what happened. It's almost like, how did that happen so easily? What have I been struggling all of these years for doing all of these different things? Cleanses and fad diets and blah, blah, blah. You can get to your optimal health and body image goals so quick. Anyhow, I hope you enjoy this conversation as much as I did. I can't wait to listen back to it. I have linked Amanda's info below, her website, as well as her podcast. If you would like to hear more, she is such a sweet soul. And until the end of the video, have fun. Hi friends, and welcome to the Relove and Rise podcast. I am your host, Amanda Gazzola, former busy bee chasing her dreams to an energizing self-love advocate. I want the kind of life that has fun, ease, joy, and flow, which is why each week I'll bring you an episode that will help you move forward to building the life that you want so that you can elevate and soar. So get ready with me and join me as we take one step forward in that direction today. Hello and welcome to the Relove and Rise podcast. I have a special guest with me today. Her name is Kelly Duffin. She has devoted most of her life to learning and practicing in holistic health. She is an advanced holistic health practitioner, individualized nutrition specialist, holistic lifestyle coach, personal training specialist, a public speaker, a health and fitness expert, and author. She is amazing. She is influential figure in the holistic health, having unparalleled success using cutting edge assessment and treatment techniques, which means that she has a lot that we're going to be able to talk about today because there's not a one size fits all when it comes to weight loss. And that's why I'm so excited to have Kelly in front of me. Hello, Kelly. How are you? Hello, I'm good. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, no problem, girl. No problem. How is your day going so far? It's good. It's always good. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. I am so glad that you're here with me today because I want to bring it back to the basics. And that's why I wanted to have you on here because I feel that in the fitness and health industry, we are overcomplicating a lot of diets. And just basically, I feel like no one knows whether to turn left or right anymore. Oh, absolutely. As soon as one thing comes out and becomes a fad, like whatever specific diet, the next day there's another one. <laughs> and I mean, I can't even keep up with it. And I find I have to research and it's just like, I find that, you know, I was already confused growing up as a little kid and, you know, wondering what to do, reading all the magazines. And now a days, now we have Google, we have so much fad and it's just like, I wouldn't know what to do anymore. I feel like I would feel so lost and alone. Yeah, it, it's definitely like that. I get a lot of people coming to me for weight loss and I bring it back to the basics and they kind of look at me like that's it and I think yeah that's all it needs yeah it's so true uh, that I that's I find that as well when they're like and it's and it's stuff that they already know and so they're kind of like looking and like I, I you like you have three heads and it's just like 
but there should be so much more. Yeah. And it's like, no, that's the best part about it is that we don't want to put anything more on you. We want you actually to do less for yourself, yeah. like less like looking on Google, like trusting yourself and knowing that you're making the right choices. Yeah. And I will go with someone into, you know, any, any strange oddity that might be preventing them from losing weight. I'll obviously look into all of that, but nine times out of 10, it's really just the basics. <laughs> oh, that's all. I'm so excited to bring it back with you. But uh, first I want to give people more of an idea of who you are. Um, I know I gave you a little bit of an introduction, but there's so much more to you. So who is Kelly? I started in emergency health services, actually, uh, in ambulance dispatch, but I had, uh, by then I was in my early 20s and I had IBS and PMS and eczema, psoriasis, acne, panic, anxiety, you name it, I had it. And it, it was just, I was so sick of that and I couldn't lose stubborn weight. I was always full of water retention, cellulite, you know, just everything that people nowadays end up with and they think that, well, it sucks that I have this, but this is just what happens and so living with it. And I, I just started delving into eight more years actually of education on holistic health and how the whole body works together as a whole unit and how does each unit affect the other systems in the body and what is going on and why. And every time I found something out, I would ask why and go further and go further until I hit the bottom. And then lo and behold, all of the issues I mentioned that I was experiencing went away. And so I started helping people in my family and people that I knew that had autoimmune diseases or you know, it started out with diabetes, MS, fibromyalgia. I specialize in those now and, you know, weight loss and things. And, and I found that just by using the, the basic principles that I had learned, which really it's just six foundational principles of health. Once I balanced those at a minimum of 80, 20 in people's lives, everyone was overcoming any of their challenges no matter what their challenge ranged from. And it just thought, I just thought that's so amazing to me that I just wanted to devote my entire life to it. So I left EMS and started my business. <laughs> wow. That yeah. is, I am excited to dive into definitely the six uh, optimal uh, foundations yeah. <laughs> that you talked about, but at the same time, how long did it take for you to overcome um, all the, the symptoms that, that you're experiencing um, I would say I started overcoming them and then they would flare up again and it really brought me back to the thoughts. Once I learned the thought process behind everything, this is going way down a rabbit hole, but once I learned that, I think it took me a year to really wow. get everything under control. Yeah. I think that that's like relatively how long it really takes because you're kind of going in and out, like learning, like, especially when it comes to anything autoimmune, especially it's like everything triggers. Like, so yeah. it's kind of like you're going and figuring out all, all like what the triggers and things are to know, just bringing more awareness to your new lifestyle. Yeah. There was a lot of trial and error. And even with people, there is no one size fits all. So yes, all six need to be balanced for everyone, but how for each person because each person is so different and so even with myself it takes a little bit of trial and error to figure out where each individual needs to start mm -hmm. Well, this is going to be good. So let take me through, can you take me through your process? So when like sure. someone's like going and experiencing and feeling all this, like what's the process? Like what, what, what do you do? So usually um, my, my best, the best thing that I do, I, I was going to say for weight loss, it just, I don't know, it's different, but if I'm going to use the whole gamut that I do. So basically there are three areas of lifestyle that give us life force energy and help renew that and keep our bodies repairing and rebuilding in an optimal way. And there are three things that drain the life force from us and cause our bodies to degrade cellularly. So the three that degrade us are thinking, breathing, and moving. So if you think about the amount of people thinking, breathing, and moving every day, that's everyone. Yes. And the only three that give us back what we need to repair properly are sleep, nutrition, and hydration. And so the amount of people thinking, breathing, and moving that don't have adequate sleep, nutrition, and hydration, it just becomes apparent <laughs> that there's an imbalance going on. So I look into their own individual lifestyle, into each one of those areas, and I really seek to figure out which area is causing the most problem and how is that affecting the others and what's going on in the body. And so in that way, I'm, a, I'm able to figure out the etiology or the root cause of whatever their issue is and help them rebuild in balance. 
Mm -hmm. That's awesome. So when someone sits with you and like, like, and they're telling you, they're basically what's going on with them. And you're really diving in more into the why and why, like, and how it's affecting like their daily life. And you're, you basically bring up those six foundational things. Do they be, are they always like, yeah. Like, do they get exactly where you're coming from? Because like, they're like looking for like that, that solution, but there's so much in that solution. Basically, I don't want to overwhelm anyone. So yeah. I get them to fill out a series of questionnaires and it doesn't seem apparent to them at all why they're asking, why they're answering questions. Some of the questions seem unrelated to maybe what their issue is, but they fill it out and they give it back. And as I go through that, I'm able to pinpoint the areas and I'm able to sort of piece it together. And I obviously, I see them um, often depending on which program they have. And so I kind of just do my own magic while I keep them underwhelmed, if that makes any sense. Yep. Yeah, definitely. Awesome. Mm. Awesome. So we're bringing it back to the basics today. So we're going to talk about weight loss. And I want to know when it comes to weight loss, what Basically, I know we just kind of talked about the foundation of the six steps and it does deal with weight loss in it, but like now we're going to just like, it's about, we overcomplicate things. So how do you bring it to where someone can really start understanding the process of weight loss and it's still figuring out their why in the weight loss, but there's just so much more. Yeah. Weight loss. There are a lot of people. I'm kind of the last resort person. Yes. <laughs> if you, like a lot of people come to me as the last resort, you know, I've tried everything. So I'm coming to you because it, you always make it work. And, and I find, I always just look straight at the gut. If they have, like, I've had people coming that have tried to lose weight for six years and nothing has worked, nothing. And they've tried everything. And but then, I, so if they say they have tried everything and I find out that they've tried yo-yo dieting and yada, yada, I look straight to the gut. And if there's an imbalance of gut bacteria or an overgrowth of candida, then that will prevent the body from effectively uh, and efficiently losing any weight. Do so I find that's, that's usually, and the, the candida cleanse diet, like this is a major tip for anybody listening, but mm -hmm. the candida cleanse diet alone will help to balance the hormones and it will help to lose water retention. It drops weight. Like it kind of, it does everything as well as balance the gut, which is the most important part. 120%. And that one's a hard pill to swallow when people find that like you bring up the candida and it's like, they just, you just feel like you just took their whole um, you know, their diet away, like what they enjoy. And then they just feel so restricted and stuff. That's like a whole mindset and like a feeling in itself. So would you people get very discouraged when they hear that? Or do they feel like, Oh, finally something like, what do you find when you tell? I don't, I don't discourage that? anyone. And I don't agree with taking anything away. So what I'll do is start them just very slowly and we'll make small changes. And how do you feel about that change? And is it upsetting to you and why? And I look all like thinking, breathing and moving are in that order specifically because thoughts really do run the show in someone's body. Totally. I'm going to yeah. interrupt that right there mm -hmm. because most people don't even know what candida is. Right. So we all have candida. It's a healthy gut bacteria, but it tends to grow out of control with the modern Western diet. So any kind of sugary substance, candida will feed on that and it tends to proliferate and it just gets out of control and does its own thing in the body, packs on extra weight and water and it's just entirely unfair. <laughs> So this is like most carbs, starches, um, candy, uh, noodles, yeah. like all that stuff. Yeah, it's anything with a with a sugar content. So the GI index, um, for anyone listening, basically that's a chart that shows you how quickly a specific food substance is converted into sugar, glucose in the body, and anything that's high and converts quickly to sugar or it has more sugar in it will feed the candida. So it's just about getting all of that out and then rebalancing. And so I, I kind of had, I went through this first for myself because I, I, I had candida, I had the overgrowth and it was causing my eczema and my psoriasis and my acne and my moods. And it was insane how much it was impacting. And so I really started it for myself and I felt restricted and I felt depressed with the diet. So I just started, um, a fun now it's a fun hobby but i hack recipes and people's favorite things to be candida friendly so in that way i try to make it as easy as possible 
Yeah, mm -hmm. because you definitely know what it feels like. And that's like the last thing you want at the end of the day is just like, wait, especially if you had stress and it's stressful, you, like, you don't want, you just, you still want to feel comfortable and be comforted. And like some people do it through food, but you, you made it fun so that like it can actually be okay and you could still get the best of both worlds. I did come across, so Kelly has a, a great YouTube channel. If you haven't uh, saw it yet, it's called Kick It With Kelly. I totally recommend it. She does a really good job. Very entertaining as well. It's not dry. She definitely has a good sense of humor <laughs> with little fun, little gifts and whatnot. But at the same time, it's so educational and it's like real life. Basically her going to the airport, showing what to eat, basically talking about the six optimal foundations of health and basically everything else that you would need to know in order to help yourself through weight loss and so much more. But I just wanted to say like that, if you want to find out more about the Candida, she definitely does have a chan uh, her channel and there is a couple of videos that are definitely defined uh, that will help you through that because that is one of the biggest things for when it comes to weight loss. So I just wanted to say that you're doing such a great job. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, the videos, I started, I do speaking engagements and I just... I couldn't, the more people I, I was able to reach speaking were changing and were getting healthy from listening to the talks. And I thought, how can I reach more people in a broader way from all over the world? And I thought, okay, YouTube, I'll just give all of my tips and info on YouTube. And it's so much fun for me as well. Yeah, you could definitely tell you have a lot of fun with it. You do a really <laughs> good job. Um, yeah, so when we are talking about the basics, candida is one of them, like for basically, is that how you start like doing a cleanse by, through or like? I don't really start with the candida. I kind of look at their whole life. And then if I think candida is driving everything, we go very slowly into it and I'll, I'll change some things and I'll ease them in and then we'll go gung ho together. I'm always doing it together with them because I don't believe in like, here you go. Bye. <laughs> you know, here's your program because it's so hard for many. And so, yeah, I get them into a one month cleanse and usually the goal is quickly reached after that one month. That is that is awesome, especially when like you have a good group like that to work together towards it. So basically, what else, like with the foundational uh, things, you would explain the six and you break it down into three each. Is that a part of the 21 day? The 21 day, okay, so the 21 day reset. That, I designed that because I did the candida cleanse for myself and then I was noticing all of my problems being fixed. So I kind of went above and beyond the candida cleanse and I developed a 21 day program that really does, it will reset a person's body and gut back to a healthy baseline. And that way it just fast forwards them um, way, way, way quicker in, into the process of reaching whatever goal. So there is no, um, there's a lot of education included in the 21 day challenge. I call it a 21 day challenge because it is challenging, but there's a lot of education there on the six principles, but the challenge is really more so driven towards the diet aspect. Um, and then if someone, like the challenge is not individualized, that's the only problem. It's just kind of like, okay, this, there is no one size fits all, but this 21 day program will help anyone reset their gut and reset their bodies. So if someone wanted to go beyond that into a more individualized approach, then they can go into the next program up, which is the total body reset. And in that one, I look at all aspects of their lifestyle. So what do you, when people are looking at you and they see your lifestyle, like, you know, what is it like that got you into this? I know you went through all this stuff on your own, but like, you know, there was so much, like everything starts from your childhood. Like, did you ever like have that, like, did you go through that awkward period? I definitely had the most awkward period ever. Oh my gosh. I was such a sickly little kid. I was so sickly and I had a lot of inflammation and I had tonsillitis all the time. And yeah, I just, yeah, I, all of the problems really developed throughout my childhood and just presented themselves once I had reached my late teens and early twenties. And there was a definite awkward stage. <laughs> I think we all have that. We definitely do. Definitely yeah. do. Um, like, would you link that to like a lot of like what's happening now with like stress and whatnot? Absolutely. And some people I even find I go right into prenatal infant development stages and I can seek out a lot of issues that have happened later in life from when the person was in the womb. 
which is really interesting. Like it's, that it's is really interesting. Can yeah. you tell me more about that? Yeah. So basically, um, everything is energy and everything is vibration. And so if somebody comes to me and just as an example, they're in their forties and they have some challenge that, you know, I've tried everything on my end to help them get through. I look at, okay, what was going on when you were in the womb? And I do some physical tests with their body to find out how their body is moving. Um, infant development, once they are born, did they have a jolly jumper? Because a jolly jumper will have many negative impacts on a person's body later in life. And then I take their body through infant development exercises that they should have done, you know, that their body should have done for the nerves to properly myelinate and function when they were growing as an infant. And I, I bring that back to baseline and that helps too. But with the energy and vibrations, if the mother was going through a seriously stressful time when she was pregnant, that can often impart into the child, um, into their mindset and their brain. And sometimes babies are actually born in a sympathetic dominant state, which means their fight or flight nervous system is strong and it creates a chronic stress response that they might be unable to figure out, but really, what was going on with the mother. So yeah, it's a, it's a whole rabbit hole, but it's just one of the most interesting aspects of what I do, I think. That so sounds interesting. Like, especially, I don't know, I, 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 like I, part of me wants to go down this rabbit hole, but part of me is just like, maybe it's like another podcast episode with you. Yeah. I, I'm very intrigued about the jolly jumper. Cause. Um, oh yeah. The jolly jumper. When you put a baby in a jolly jumper, a baby, if a baby really needs to crawl and learn to walk on its own, it's not meant to be put into an upright vertical position when it's going through those stages because the nerves actually myelinate. What that means is that the nerves are becoming covered by a sheath that tells the body how to function. It's kind of like signaling mechanisms. And so if you put a baby vertical into a jolly jumper and it's starting to use those movements, the nerves actually aren't forming properly. And so I get people that have a funny walk and that walk will, maybe they'll have sciatica or maybe, you know, it, it doesn't matter. There's, there's all kinds of different things that show up, but I can always tell once I go through the exercises, I just say, you know, were you in a jolly jumper as a kid? And they'll say yes. And, or I'll be walking down the street and I'll see someone in front of me walking in a crowded mall or whatever, thinking, oh, they had a jolly jumper when they were a kid. Oh my gosh. Like how did, like, did, did that just come across your research? Like how did you find that, out I about went that? To, basically every schooling I went to, some places taught nutrition and some taught movement and none of them taught very, very, very in depth. And I started noticing that the textbooks given by these schools were actually funded by General Mills, which is a Monsanto, um, a Monsanto partner. And I thought, okay, that's skewed information. So where can I get the proper information? And I found the Czech Institute in California. And it has since become the leading holistic health institute all over the world now. Um, and through that institute is where I got, I went there for um, six years to learn all about holistic health. That's where I learned the infant development stuff. Um, and then I just went on to Ryerson for two more years after that to learn integrative health, which means, you know, where does allopathic health, regular family doctor health, where does that meet holistic health? Because I really do believe that there's a place for both. And I oh, like to- Oh, I agree with you there. Yeah. Yep. And so I kind of got, most of my information is from the Czech Institute. Yeah. Wow. That is- I just know so like, because I, I just know so many people that definitely use a jolly jump jumper, but like, it's just like, sometimes like, I understand why that they do. It's just like a nice way thing to do to put the kid on there so that you can kind of get a few things done in the house, but then they're also getting some exercise. Like it's, yeah. <laughs> and the kid, the babies really enjoy it. It's just, they do. Oh yeah. They're so happy. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Do you have like, body. do you have a suggestion like for like an alternate thing for people to use or well I always go playpen if you need to contain the baby like some people use the jolly jumper so that they can because it sits in a door frame so that way they can walk around their kitchen and talk uh -huh. to their baby as they're cooking and and whatever so I would say if you need to um, keep your baby in one spot <laughs> I would use a playpen or one of those little chairs that sit on the counter I can't remember oh, the bumbo or yeah, something like it, that yeah and other than that, look, put the baby gates up and let them crawl around because them crawling and standing and walking on their own 
it doesn't matter how long it takes. The, the one problem is that there's a lot of parents and of course, you'd be so proud that your baby started walking before anyone else's baby, you know, like <laughs> my kid is already running across the room, yay. But it doesn't matter how long it takes. Some children will take a lot longer to get into the walking and running mode than others, but that is truly for them the best way to do it. So let them crawl around as much as possible and walk around and crawl up on things. And, you know, it's obviously watch them because they'll go anywhere but yeah it's that's the best way to do it uh thank you so much for saying that and bringing that up i'm sure a lot of people are going to have a lot more questions about that uh for sure because i don't I, honestly i've never heard that before it does make sense as you talk about it but you just never see or, like hear any of those types of news ever ever that's so. why that's what i meant by like me being the eternal three year old and asking why <laughs> Yeah, like I'll say, you, know, you know, jelly jumpers are harmful. Okay, but why? And I'll just go right to the very end with everything. Is there any other things that you come across that you've seen that you really went down the rabbit hole of like finding why that you were surprised about? Um, yes, it's hard to even pinpoint because there are many. Okay, so sciatica, that's something that a lot <laughs> of people deal with. I have actually never seen a person continue having sciatica once we fix their gut and not not their gut bacteria issue but do they have inflammation in the small intestine and the colon so basically the sciatica it shares the same nerve distribution as the colon so if the colon is inflamed somebody will have sciatica and so 99.9% .9 of the cases of sciatica are actually coming from a food intolerance situation so that was kind of mind blowing <laughs> That I would, if you don't mind, I would, I would love to talk to that about that because I do sure. know a few people that are going through that and they do try like some of the diet because it, I do believe that a lot of it does from inflammation in the gut. And I've read a lot about that too, but like, what is it that it's like, what's like one of the biggest things that like many people don't know when they're trying to work on the sciatica and they're trying to get rid of that through the diet. The most inflammatory substances are alcohol, primary, most inflammatory substance in the world is alcohol. So I tell people to avoid the big five. So that's alcohol, gluten, and gluten is anything with wheat, barley, and rye, corn, soy, and pasteurized dairy. So once they avoid those, and gluten doesn't affect every single person, but it is wheat, barley, and rye tends to be inflammatory in many, many, many people, even if they don't necessarily have a gluten intolerance, the wheat and the barley and the rye is still highly inflammatory. And so if they come off of corn, soy, dairy, um, gluten, and alcohol, then we go in and add things back in slowly once every four days, just to make sure we know which one is the culprit. So I usually start with those because those are pretty generic. Do you have to dive in deeper sometimes because like sometimes they'll still struggle through sciatica even though they, they've cut out that in their diet? Sometimes. If they don't heal through one of those, I tend to look at eggs because eggs, um, a lot of people have issues with eggs and don't know. And eggs are obviously one of the easiest foods to eat. We all eat, not we all, but a lot of people eat eggs and many of yeah. them. And so I do look at egg intolerance after that. And then it really just, then if, if it's not eggs and it's not any of those five, I haven't actually encountered that yet. So wow, interesting. other things, yeah. Very interesting. Mm -hmm. That is awesome. So for you, did, when it comes to weight loss, like, and your and the mindset's a big one. So that's another one I want to talk about today because I find that like, a lot of people sometimes have the right intention, but they don't have the mindset. And for me, when I definitely went through my stuff, uh, I lost the weight, no problem, but I still, I still saw myself as the same person and whatnot. So, and because we, the stress is such a big one these days and it does deal like, I think internally causing inflammation as well in your tummy. Cause it's like how we feel, how we feel. And so we hold on to a lot of toxicity. How did, how do you work with people when it comes to the mindset? Like when you're trying to change their lifestyle, do you do it one habit at a time? Do, do, is it slow? Um, it, it's based entirely on the person. Some people, I would never suggest anyone to change more than three things per week. That even psychologically is the max that you 
that anyone should because it's just too much otherwise and something else will backfire. So I, I start with three things per week at the minimum or maximum even. <laughs> and uh, if that's too much, I tailor it back. Stress is the leading cause of inflammation in the gut prior to alcohol. Mm -hmm. So I would say stress and alcohol, stress causes leaky gut. And based on the person, what they're doing and like, where is their stress coming from? I'll go individually into that. But there are a couple of tools that I use. There's a, a coin drill where someone can carry around a coin that is significant to them. And psychologically, if you have something to physically tangibly hold, it helps rewire the brain. So basically what I'm doing with people is rewiring their neural pathways. And so I use a coin, but just to give you an idea, each brain cell has a hundreds and hundreds of little receptors coming off of them. So you can picture them like little tiny antennas on a cell. And each of those is specific to one particular emotion, whether it's embarrassment, anger, you know, it doesn't matter, every single emotion, and there are hundreds of them. If someone is predominantly negative or stressed, as our cells divide and recreate themselves, the new cell will have more little antennas specific to the negativity on it. Wow. Or that specific worry, say someone's worried about their child, their, this new cell will be programmed to worry about that child because the brain's trying to be efficient, but it kind of shoots us in the foot sometimes. So what I'm doing is I use just different tricks and tools to rewire these cells, rewire the neural pathways and get the cells reproducing. It takes about two months to notice change when it comes to mindset. And so I always tell people, keep patience, but basically the coin, if they get a, a worrisome thought or a negative thought or a stressful thought, there are two sides to every coin. So you think about the stress of the worst case scenario, and then what's on the other side of that coin? Like what's the best case scenario? And if they can't get there, I tell them to imagine the rim around the coin as a third side, just meaning the potential of getting there. So if it's too much to picture, you know, not having that worry because it's just so big, I can't picture being without it. Then we talk about, well, what is the potential there? And the program is just so individualized. It just depends who, who the person is and what their, yeah, what their concern is. I like that. I've never heard, like, I, it makes sense the two sides to every coin, but it's like that, that it does bring the intention out. Cause so do they hold it or do they, do they keep it in their pocket? Like, is it you just can like- keep it in your pocket. But what I did is, and I thought it was so silly. Like I, I learned it from Paul Check, who founded the Czech Institute. And I thought it was so silly. I thought, what is this silly coin? Like, this is not going to do anything. <laughs> and I just, whatever, I carried it around in my pocket and I would just touch it. And as I was touching it, it would force me to think about, okay, what is, what are these two sides? And then eventually you don't need a coin and you mm -hmm. just automatically start doing it. Training yourself. That is yeah. really cool. I love that. Like I did something similar, but I wore a bracelet or I wore a necklace, like just something that would just always bring me back if I touched it or whatnot. But like a coin, we technically, sometimes, I don't know, I always have coins in random pockets and stuff like that. And so that's more tangible to have something and make you think about that. That's a really cool idea. And the negative receptors, like where it's just amazing how it can just be a downward spiral when you start thinking and mm -hmm. you just, you bring like more connectors to think about that. So you're basically minimizing as you go along, holding that coin and getting to like basically peeling back the onion pretty much. Yeah. And another really, really powerful one is to write out if you have a main concern, like for example, somebody might say, I, I just will never lose weight. Everyone else can lose weight, but I won't. So their belief, I'll get them to write down because neurologically, if you write something by hand, it actually rewires the brain much faster mm -hmm. and much more efficiently. And so I get someone to write down that main belief, I, I will never lose weight, my body won't lose weight. And then the second line, what is all the evidence you can think of? I don't care how many pages you need, but what is the evidence you could think of to contradict that? That's obviously not true because of this or, you know, because everyone's different and I haven't found what works for me or I really haven't tried everything. And then the third statement being, I can lose weight. And in that way, you are actually physically rewiring the neural pathways. Oh, yeah. And that's, that's, that's the hugest part is the belief system that we all have, like, you know, and finding your worth in that belief system, because you like, you know, I, like, I don't believe in the statement, you could fake it till you make it like, I don't believe in that fully. Like, I understand that 
I understand the concept of it, but there's just something that just has a negative connotation that I feel towards it because I don't feel like you're all being who you are in that moment. You're kind of forcing yeah. something. And I understand that you have to get yourself out of that comfort zone. So, but yeah. it can be such a mind F in regards to that too, because it's like you're playing back that back and forth, that coin pretty much. So I yeah, like that, basically but. it's just challenging your belief system. So yeah, fake it till you make it. I don't, I understand the concept, but I also don't necessarily agree with that because it's the emotional response that creates the actual change. And so if someone is faking that they feel amazing today and, you know, if I fake it enough and smile enough, it'll be true. And, but are you getting that real emotional response on the inside? You know, cause that's what's driving it. And it can create a backwards effect where it can cause more frustration and more stress because you're, you're just making yourself notice that you're not feeling okay that whole time. Yeah, <laughs> totally. And getting and like when you're by yourself and you're trying to get out of that, it's really hard to do. It's hard to get out of that because like you haven't really trained yourself that really well yet to even understand like that feeling of where it's coming from and why and all the kinds of, you don't even know any of that, that factor. You just know that how you feel and whatnot. Yeah. And patience. I always, always tell people to please be patient because just like a train track and railroads, when we're talking about neural pathways, if a train is going to, if a new track is being built for a train, the train will not run on that track until the track is completed. And so people say, you know, I'm monitoring my thoughts all day long. I'm writing down my beliefs all day long and I'm doing all these coin exercises and I'm getting frustrated because nothing's changing, but the cells haven't divided yet. And so I always tell people it takes two months of consistency in order to get, in order to notice for that train to start going on the new track. <laughs> yeah. I, and that, 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 sorry, I'm excited because <laughs> like, well, you just basically nailed that right in the head and stuff like that. Like people like it's, I know that they know it's not an overnight success, but even like two months from now, even four months from now, you kind of, you're only going to get better as the process goes along and stuff like that. And the thing is, it doesn't ever really go away. You right. just get really good at understanding like, oh, and then you know how to switch that and flip that coin and to think of the opposite as opposed to that. Because like, again, it's like, you, it's something that is like, we have to tap, like we haven't really tapped into. And when it's new, it's kind of scary because like you, your thoughts can go all over, all over the place. You don't know who, sometimes you don't even know who you're talking to, to be honest right. in that process when you're feeling that. So I just think that you nailed it there where it's like, it's something that we constantly work on, but you only get better as time goes on. And like, you'll know how to work through it even faster and faster and faster. Yeah, for sure. And that there's a quote and I might totally butcher the quote because I can't, <laughs> I might not get it right. But basically there's no situation that's an actual problem. It's how we're viewing the situation that creates the problem for us. And mm -hmm. so eventually it's not that people are like, oh, well, I'll just have to live with this problem and I'll be fine with it. It won't be a problem to you anymore. The situation might still be the same, but you're not going to have trouble with it anymore. Yep. I am. Um, this is a personal, a personal question, but I think it's one that many people I think do deal with. Um, when someone's working on themselves, for instance, like, you know, I might like, I have my parents and whatnot. And they definitely can be more of the ones that can be more of your naysayer than can be more of your cheerleader in that because they're not understanding the process. They're learning a lot for themselves, like most of the time. And they don't even know that you felt like certain, those certain ways, like, especially when you're starting to understand yourself and you're like going through that transformation, what happens with your clients when they come to you? And I don't know if they, it's like through the personal, their personal circle, like how do you help them through that to understand? Because when we're talking about back to the basics right now, that is a part of the basics that you are learning when you're kind of learning like your new self and whatnot. And you're like, wow, I'm like, I didn't really realize that like I'm stirring a lot like of heads right now where like they, they think I'm obsessive about this. Like I'm too, like too, you know, too much of something is not good. Like they, they bring that into the mix. What do you help? How do you help them through that? Um, basically it's, I always point to what is the concern or what is behind your concern about what other people think? Because honestly, 
it always seems to, and I don't want to label everybody, of course, but it always seems to, in my experience, boil down to fear of what other people think. Like, what if you don't go out drinking with your friends on the weekend? Are they going to think you're a loser? Or, you know, and what if you're going against your parents' value system that they raised you with because it's become an unhealthy religious dogma for you, as an example? Or, you know, like, you really have to consider what is your concern about what other people think? Are you worried about being rejected? Are you worried about upsetting your parents? And, and then it's really about having conversations with them, like crucial conversations. Mm-hmm. I love that. And it's so true. I just wanted to see what your thoughts were in regards to that, because that is a part of the personal journey when you are going through a transformation is that you're coming across all the, you feel like there are barriers at the time, like, Oh, I have another thing. I have another thing. But I, I like, as much as sometimes it feels like it's very a barrier, you're only learning more about yourself and who you are. And you're standing up for yourself. You're learning to have a voice. You're learning to have permission to say no. You're learning all these new things apart. And this is like sometimes a part of the journey is like, yeah, learning how to deal with it and to basically communicate how you feel. And it from to come from a feeling like in saying you make me feel like this when you do this, instead of saying, you know, you did this to me. You don't, it's not about yes. doing it coming across that way. It's basically coming from a feeling because that's the more word, understanding. Yeah. The rule of thumb I like to use is you talk to people or you should talk to people about your thoughts, needs, and feelings. Because if you're telling someone you're having a specific thought, that is yours. And, you know, it's not up to anyone else that you're having this thought and your needs, that's fair to all of us. And what are your needs? Like, you know, I need you to, maybe you're uncomfortable with what I'm doing, but I really need you to support me in this. And not one person is going to challenge that, you know, because we all, everyone, they do love us. People do love us. And so it's just about really asserting yourself with your wants, needs, and feelings. And, and yeah, that in that way, you remove that sort of blame energy of you're doing this and you're blah. And to say to someone, I wouldn't say to someone, you're making me feel, I would say, you know, I'm having these feelings when I'm around you and maybe you can help me, you know, figure that out. Totally. Yeah. It's like, this is where the vulnerability is such power. Like you, you're pouring out a, a different like you're coming out from a different place. You're trying to understand it. And like, you know, that vulnerability is like, can really stop us because it's like, you don't know where it's going to go and how the other person's going to feel. So it's kind of one of those like, like awkward moments, but yeah, that's such, it's an important part in your, in your development, especially uh, when you're bringing it back to the basics. And this is, this is the stuff that either, I don't know about you, so correct me if I'm wrong, but this is the stuff that can make us continue on the journey of our transformation or stop us because it's just too much. So oh, yeah, that's, it's probably the biggest roadblock with people. And one of the questions in the questionnaire is, what is your support system? Like, tell me about your support system and who are they and what is their relation to you? And, you know, and, and then that way, like, same thing with losing weight. Say there's a mom with three kids and a husband and she needs to go on a candida diet that's challenging when it comes to, you know, cooking a meal for dinner for the family. And so I really look deep into every one of their most personal connections in a way that I can make it the easiest possible for them. Like, well, I can't just sit here and eat this and my kid, and I'm cooking food for my kids and my husband that looks way more delicious. (laughs) So I kind of just, I help them in all areas. (laughs) That's a big one because especially if you're like, just say on your monthly friend and you're feeling that and you're seeing that, oh my God. <laughs> it just causes fighting. Really. <laughs> Definitely. You make me feel. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. I totally would feel that way for her. <laughs> but that's a really, like the support system is like a really big one to depth and like to, you need to, you, you start learning it. You start learning about yourself, you start learning who, who's there for you and who's not. And you, you learn how to work with it and um, in the best way possible. Cause yeah, again, when someone's on a, like, you know, trying to go on a diet and yeah. And the husband's eating that, like, the husband had definitely sometimes has to understand a little bit too where she's coming from and maybe eat it at work or, you know, or not, or just switch it up for like here and there, not to have it every night or something like that. Like just work together as a team. Yeah. Or like, here's a, here's a hacked recipe for that very thing. Do you maybe want to eat this version with me for the next three weeks? (laughs) Yeah. But one really cool thing I want to mention on that, that, Mm -hmm. that people don't tend to think about because we're all concerned with our connections, but if you stick to your guns in kind, 
kindness, of course, and go through this with people, they, you would be so amazed at who you end up attracting into your life that's new, that Ooh, is supportive of your new love. life. It's so cool. It is so cool how that happens because everything is energy and vibration. And when you have made a decision, you change your whole vibration and energy and people are drawn to you that are of like mind then. And so you keep all of your wonderful connections, but you make amazing new ones that are in line with your new life. That, I love that you just mentioned that. That's such a huge takeaway right there. And it's true. And the thing is, when you keep doing that a lot more, you get more excited about it and you want to stick with it a lot more. You're so right there. That was a big one. Yeah. And people around you will start, when I did my journey, you know, my mom was very awesome and accommodating when I was over at her place. And so she would eat with me that way. And all of a sudden she was like, oh my gosh, like I'm feeling so much better. I'm losing oh, weight. Yay. Like you start you start impacting, in, indirectly impacting those around you to feel better as well. Uh, it, I love that. I'm totally going to le leave it there because I believe that, you know, out of this conversation today, it's just basically understanding your gut health and figuring out, you know, what's working for you and whatnot. Like, again, Kelly has a great YouTube channel that talks more about the Candida, the six foundational principles of optimal health. It, those, and it is going always back to the basics, having that support system, like everything that we just talked about is about simplicity and simplicity when it's so simple, you'll do it. When you overcomplicate it, you get discouraged a lot faster and you don't tend to stick with it because it doesn't feel as natural. So mm -hmm. I love what you had to say today. I thought this was amazing. I definitely think that you're doing such a great job. Kelly, how can people find out more about you? So the website is kickitwithkelly.com. YouTube is Kick It With Kelly. I am Kick It With Kelly with dots in between each word on Instagram. My email is kelly at kickitwithkelly.com. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll have all this in the link below as well. <laughs> and basically right now I'm on my way to a thousand subscribers. And when I reach a thousand, I have a software that randomly picks one. So it's unbiased, but one person will get a completely individualized program for them. Yes. Yes. That is one of the things that you wanted to talk about today. Maybe just give people an, like an idea of what they can expect with the program. So basically the program would look at all areas of your life. It would look at what's going on in your body, what is coming down in the line for you in the future health-wise based on how things are right now, and what is how is what's going on affecting the other parts of your body, and it looks at just your whole lifestyle. So yeah. <laughs> nice. And that's like, again, you heard how important it is to look at everything because mind, body, the fitness, physical, internal, all that, everything's connected. And when you start understanding yourself and the connection a lot more, you're going to be so much more happier. Thank you yeah. so much for being on here Thank today, Kelly. Thank you so much. That was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed talking with you. <laughs> all right, guys, I am sending you guys so much love till next time. And as always, the only way to get this podcast out is you. I thank you guys so much from the bottom of my heart because it would not be where it is without you guys. If you find any value out of this podcast, please like, share, and rate and subscribe. It honestly would mean the world to me, and that is how you can give some love to this podcast back. All right. Thank you guys so much, and until next time, keep being amazing and keep being you. We're back. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you got some awesome nuggets that will help you on your way to your health, wellness, and body image goals. If you thought that this video or audio was helpful, informative, or entertaining at all, please give it a thumbs up down there for me, as that really helps me know what kind of content to keep producing for you. If you would like to see certain content, if you want recipes, if you want to know more about weight loss, any kind of odd question, doesn't matter. I film regular Q&A videos, so I'd be more than happy to answer anything. Please comment comment below with any ideas or questions you may have. Please, please subscribe to this channel. Subscribing is where all of the support comes from for me when I produce this content. I give all of my best tips, tricks, and how-tos for free, and it would mean a lot if you could subscribe. It's free to subscribe, and it's just like having a favorites tab on the internet. Please, if you would like notifications of each time I post a new video, hit that little bell notification icon down there, and you will be notified each time I upload upload. And until next time, have super amounts of fun in your life. Have super amounts of fun bringing your own life back to basics. And I'll catch you next time. Bye.